Welcome, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Jamisa Jarman. I am the program chair for this event for the San Antonio Black Lawyers. First, a few housekeeping matters. Um, we've set up in the fellowship hall some refreshments, and so there are pastries and there, there, there's water, so if anyone needs any water, please feel free to leave the sanctuary and go and get that. Also, if you have to use the restroom, there are four on this, in this area. There are two doors in the back of me, one to the right, one right behind me, and then there are two in the halls in the back. So if you go out of the back doors, go straight, go to the right, each side or left on this side, then you'll go down the hall and you'll find the restrooms. And so feel free if you need to do that also. On behalf of the San Antonio Black Lawyers Association, I want to thank you all for coming, along with our partners. And I'll talk a little bit about our partners because we've been very blessed this year to have some great partners. The San Antonio Black Lawyers have, have, have in the past, at least since 2012, put on some sort of candidates form in order to inform the constituents in Bear County of the judicial races or the mayoral races because it's important to have information. So when you go into the polls and you vote, you know who you're voting for and you have knowledge and information about them. Our goal is to provide you with the knowledge. This is a nonpartisan event and we just invited the masses to come and hear from the candidates. Again, as I said, as the years have gone by, we've been very fortunate to partner with some great people, and this year is just no exception. And so I want to introduce our partners this year. And our first partner I'm going to talk about is the Community of Churches for Social Action. CCSA has partnered with us in the past, and it's been a great relationship. The second organization who's partnering with us this year is the NAACP. Another organization we're partnering with this year is the League of Women Voters Incorporated. Another partner is Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, Delta Rho Lambda Chapter. And you might have seen those young men at the doors that show me where to sit. And the last organization is close to my heart. It's Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, Alpha Pi Zeta Chapter. And it's close to my heart because I'm a Zeta, so. The blue should have given it away. Okay. We would be remiss if we didn't thank Pastor Jerry Daly because he has been so wonderful with this endeavor. And the Macedonia Baptist Church staff, they have just been, their generosity and their hospitality has just been wonderful. So at this time, I'm going to invite Pastor Daly up to give a few words. Thank you, Jamisa. We want to extend words of welcome to each of you that have gathered here. We thank God for the partnership that is taking place. And because of that partnership, we believe that we can do more together than any one of us can do alone. Uh, Macedonia is a church with an exciting ministry where love is intentional and discipleship is our goal. And so we believe that it is important, significant, and imperative that we take advantage of moments like these. Late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said that voting is the foundation stone of our political action. And so we have to take advantage. Nehemiah's countrymen tried to get him to come down from the wall. And he said, I'm doing a great work and I can't come down. That's why we're here. We're doing a great work together and we can do a greater work and we can't allow anyone to make us come down. We gotta pray. It starts with prayer, doesn't it? Amen. We can do nothing until we pray. But let me tell you, we can do so much more after we have prayed. Yes, we can get up and vote. Yeah. And that's what we're going to do. We welcome you to Macedonia Baptist Church not only today, the way Jamisa was giving directions to the restroom, she'll be a good usher at Macedonia. Amen. <laughs> She 
he knows where to tell him to go. Thank you for the partnership. Thank you, candidates, for coming because it is imperative that we do these things together. If you don't know the name of the person sitting next to you, shake their hand and give them your name. Amen. And God bless you is our prayer. Thank you, Jamisa. And next, I'd like to introduce presiding elder of the San Antonio District of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, yes. senior pastor, Raymond Bryant, to give a prayer. Let us pray. God of grace, mm -hmm. God of mercy. Yes, Lord. Grant us wisdom Please. for the facing of this hour. Yeah. Give us the wisdom, the insight needed and necessary to make the right choices as we go forth in the political process. We pray for your presence in this room. Open our eyes and help us to see yes. and stop our ears and allow us to hear and guide us in the direction that we need to go to make San Antonio everything that it needs to be and we thank you for it in Jesus name Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen it cannot be stressed enough how important this upcoming election is mm -hmm. and it is really important that you have information and I hope that the attendees today were able to get a sample ballot from the front or a specific ballot for you that's really just for you so that you can follow along and you can mark the candidate of your choice. You can take that ballot into the voting booth with you. So if you don't have one, please let one of the ladies in the back, either a lady in blue or Jocelyn in the back in the gray t-shirt with Sabla No, so that they can print out the ballot for you so you can use it during this presentation. Also, if by some chance you don't have a ballot or you lose the ballot, um, there was a piece of paper out front which gives you the information online that you can go to and you can find your specific ballot either through the election department or through the League of Women Voters. Also, there's a voter's guide outside and that will list the candidates and not just the judicial candidates because if you saw the sample ballot or you saw your specific ballot, you know that there are a lot of other positions on that ballot. And we couldn't cover everybody, so if you go to the League of Women Voters or just do some research, but the, their guide is really good because they ask questions of the candidates and you can compare the answers. So there's some outside if you need them or also you can go online and there's a piece of paper out there which has that information. Mm -hmm. Early voting starts October 22nd, which is Monday and lasts through November 2nd. So there's really no excuse for people not to vote because during early voting you can vote anywhere you want to. And there's a list outside of that also, so if you need it, please grab, a piece of, grab that piece of paper. And lastly, I'm gonna talk about this real quickly before we get started. Um, VIA is going to be allowing people to ride for free on November 6th, so on election day, if you show your voter registration card. And it's also our understanding that Uber and Lyft will be providing either free or discounted rides on election day, but it's going to be contingent upon, upon a promotional code. And I tried to get that code to distribute, but they haven't released them yet. So if you're an Uber or Lyft person, um, please check on their website because they are partnering with organizations who are gonna provide those codes for you. Again, no reason not to get to the polls. And one final housekeeping matter that I forgot to mention, um, now cast essay is taping this and if you want to get a copy of the video or replay it i guess replay it you can go to www.nownowcastsa.com and i think there's some of these cards in the back so feel free to pick up the cards and there's a lady in the pews who has some cards for you 
Now, before we get started, I want to go over a couple of housekeeping rules for this forum. Each candidate will be given two minutes, and they'll be given a 30-second warning uh, by Glenda Rowan. And Glenda, would you stand up so that they can see you? So Glenda will be the one. And Glenda is representing League of Women Voters. No candidate will be allowed, I'm sorry, will be allowed to speak for longer than the two minutes. The candidates have not been given any limitations on what they can talk about, so they can talk about anything they want to for those two minutes. Because of the number of candidates, a representative is not allowed to appear for the candidate. The candidate has to be here to speak. However, we're making concessions for candidates who have other things going on, and if you're running late, you will still be able, the candidate will still be able to speak if their time has passed as long as as soon as everyone else is finished. They'll just come in at the end. So if, if a candidate shows up late, that candidate will still be allowed to speak. Candidates, when um, they arrive, they had some had campaign material. That's on a table in the back. Please feel free to pick up that information also. And lastly, um, the we're going to call, we're going to start out of order a little bit because one of the candidates has a pressing engagement. And so we're about to proceed now. And the first court we're going to call is the, the probate court number one. And they're, OK, I'm calling the first candidate that's going to be called with the permission of Judge Cross is Oscar Kays in the Democrat in this race. And the last thing, there are microphones all over for the candidates. So any of the microphones supposedly are hot, so you can pick up the microphone behind you, you can come down, it's completely up to you, whatever you feel comfortable with. And at this time, I give you Oscar Kazin, the Democrat for probate court number one. Thank you. My name is Oscar Kazin, and I'm running for probate court of law number one. And as I look across some of the congregation, I see many familiar faces. I want to thank you uh, for having me here. Uh, you know, normally, and this is kind of poetic justice, everyone here will nod their heads, the probate courts are the last two courts you can possibly vote for on the ballot. Uh, I am actually almost the last Democrat standing on the ballot. And so every time we have one of these forums, I'm always sitting there for two hours before I get to talk. So I think this time they'll all forgive me because they've had to sit behind them every single time. Um, you know, it's hard to get to know somebody in two minutes. But I think I can share with you the three most important parts of my life. The first one, obviously, is when I married my beautiful wife, Melissa, who I've been with for 27 years. She is my best friend. But the two most significant things that prepared me for this are my service in the United States Marine Corps and my acceptance to the Thurgood Marshall School of Law at Texas Southern. You see, the Marines taught me how to fight, but Thurgood Marshall taught me what to fight for. <laughs> And I know that when you ask me to be your judge, because I have been your judge for 15 years, and when I was, I was one of the very first ones to set up a court that took people who were addicted to drugs out of jail and into treatment. That was my court. And when I was, I was one of the very first people that set up a court that took people out of incarceration and hospitalization and put them in treatment when they were mentally ill. Because I know, after my tour, my tour, forgive me, as a Marine, what to fight for, and in my education as a lawyer, what's important. And these issues of justice, yes. these issues of fairness, are echoes of what God demands of all of us. I think Thurgood Marshall said that. I am hopeful that you will consider me on the ballot this year. It's pretty easy to find me on the yellow one. Just go to the very end. <laughs> and if you stay awake long enough this November 6th that are at a computer, just keep pressing that button until you get to Kazen. Thank you. And now I'd like to call Judge Kelly Cross, the Republican on the ballot. I'd like to thank everyone for having all of the candidates here this afternoon, and the sun is out. My name is Kelly Cross. I am your probate judge for probate court number one, and I want to very much ask for your vote starting on Monday. 
I've accomplished over 50,000 case dispositions. I've made this court very, very efficient. I am taking care of probate and mental health. And what Judge Kazin said is true. Mental health is very, very important. What I want you to know is that I believe racism still exists. Mm -hmm. It exists in the delivery of services, but it also exists down to the very smallest level inside of the homes, all of our homes. And until we can get rid of the shame of mental illness, it's not gonna go right. Until we take countywide responsibility for housing, for education, and for civil people who are law abiding, who have mental health issues, I don't know if we can make it much better than it is now. I appreciate all the work that Judge Kazin did when he was an associate judge in this office, but we are moving forward. We are educating our faith communities with pathways to hope for probate and for mental health. And I ask for you to remember that this is a civil court. It is not a criminal court. We do not deal with people who are breaking the law, but eventually they will come into the civil system. Hopefully they will be in our civil system and never get into the criminal system at all. Those that are mentally ill deserve our prayer they deserve our resources, and they deserve a qualified judge. My name is Kelly Cross. I am your judge for Bear County Probate Court Number 1, and I thank you for allowing all of us to have a moment of your time. Thank you. And just in case you're confused, um, that wasn't exactly how it was on the ballot, but the candidates agreed to go in that order. So from now on, we're going to follow the ballot com uh, exactly. So are there, the 4th Court of Appeals District Place 2, are there any candidates from that court? 4th Court of Appeals District Place 3, Jason Pulliam is the Republican on that ballot, on that ticket, and would he come down please, or find a microphone? Hi, good afternoon, my name is Jason Pulliam. Thank you to Reverend Daly and the organizations who put on this event this afternoon. I want to send greetings from my pastor, Reverend Ray D. Brown from Resurrection Baptist Church. I'm running for the Fourth Court of Appeals, Place 3. I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York, and I have a bachelor's degree in political science and a master's degree in political science, and then I attended and graduated from the Thurgood Marshall School of Law in Houston, Texas. <clears throat> After graduating from law school, I joined the United States Marine Corps as a JAG lawyer, and I served four years at Camp Lejeune in North Carolina in 2002. I was the top-rated criminal defense lawyer and was the recipient of the Defense Counsel of the Year Award. After my tour of duty concluded, I returned to Texas, where I represented <coughs> Texans in both civil and criminal cases. In 2010, I was elected judge of County Court at Law Number 5, and I served in that capacity for a little over four years. When Greg, uh, excuse me, <laughs> Uh, Rick Perry, former governor, appointed me to the Fourth Court of Appeals, and I served on that court for two years, 2015 and 2016. I've been in civil litigation since that time, and I'm running to get back on the Fourth Court of Appeals. I'm also, um, sir, I served on the Public Safety Commission. I was appointed by Governor Greg Abbott in 2017, and I serve as one of five gubernatorially appointed commissioners over the 10,000 member Public Safety Commission. I'm running for this seat because I believe I'm qualified in both civil and criminal law. I've been endorsed by the San Antonio uh, Express News for this seat. This seat's important because it serves 32 counties, and this is ultimately, in most cases, the last court you will see for both criminal and civil cases because the Texas Supreme Court and the Court of Criminal Appeals hear only a small number of cases. Dr. King said that we should respect the dignity and worth of all human personality. And the way judges can do that is by the proper interpretation and equal application of the law to all citizens, regardless of race, gender, or socioeconomic status. My name is Jason Pulliam. I look forward to earning your vote. Thank you very much. And next we have Justice Patricia O'Connell Alvarez.
thank you for having us. Uh, thank you, uh, Pastor Daly. My name is Patricia O'Connell Aguadis, and I am your justice in the Fourth Court of Appeals, Place 3. I went to UTSA. I went to the University of Texas School of Law. I graduated in 1987. Uh, after that, I practiced trial work. I was in the trenches. I represented uh, everyone and everything in every case imaginable in the trial courts. Then I went to the Court of Appeals and um, I was elected in 2013 and I served there with you. Let me tell you what a judge in the Court of Appeals should be. A judge of the Court of Appeals should be a straight shooter, no politics involved, should look at justice. Justice is very important. And it's very important because if we have any problems as judges, we should recuse ourselves from the cases. If we have any type of problem with impropriety, with feelings, or so forth, we should recuse ourselves. And I have done that. I also follow the law, and I protect your constitutional rights. I have, I was a single parent for uh, many years. I brought up my son, he's an attorney, married to an attorney. I have five beautiful grandchildren. I'm a member of Holy Redeemer Catholic Church, and I ask for your vote. My name is Patricia O'Connell Alvarez, and thank you very much for having us here. The next seat is the Fourth Court of Appeals, District Place 4. Is there anyone here for that seat? The next is the Fourth Court of Appeals, District Place 5. I'd like to call uh, Justice Rebecca Simmons, please. Good afternoon. It is a delight and pleasure to be here. We always love the opportunity to come before the public, before you, and I'm here to actually earn your vote, or at least I hope I can. By doing so, um, I want to tell you a little bit about my background, a little bit about my experience, my vision for the court. If I can fit this in two minutes, it's, it'll be a miracle. Um, I grew up in a small town in Texas. My father, my grandfather were lawyers. I spent a lot of time after school making copies and typing back when typewriters had ribbons. Um, from there, I was inspired to go to law school, and I did, and I was very interested in litigation and trial work. I thought that was very exciting. And I moved to San Antonio where I married and had my family, but I also started my practice with a law firm where I did a broad range of litigation and trial work. And uh, I've been a lawyer for over 25 years now. Um, during the course of that, St. Mary's Law School asked me to come and do a course, and now I've been doing that for 24 years. And it's to teach young students uh, at the law school about how to do a trial. And so I get a lot of... Uh, a lot of excitement and energy from that group. But what you should know also is my judicial experience. I actually was on the trial bench in San Antonio trying cases of all kinds from family law to contracts to car accidents. I then was on the appellate court and I then on the, was on the appellate court for eight years and I continued doing my service as a visiting judge around the state as both a trial judge and uh, an appellate judge. What I would suggest for you is that the court needs experience, and it needs experience in a broad range of cases of both criminal, and I've done a thousand opinions that I've written, 500 of them or more have been on criminal side and on the um, civil side. But most of all, I'm here to tell you, the most important thing for a judge is to respect justice, respect the people before you, and to be unbiased in your opinions. Thank you very much, Rebecca Simmons, for the Fourth Court of Appeals. Next, we have the Fourth Court of Appeals, District Place 7. Is there anyone here for that bench? And now we're going to start with the district courts. The first one is the District uh, 45th District Judicial District Court, Stephanie Walsh, Judge Stephanie Walsh. Stephanie Walsh, you're a judge of the 45th District Court, and I thank you very much to all the organizations that put this together, and I thank you for coming out and learning about us. 
There is only one door to the courthouse. It is not a door for D or R. There is one door and everyone walks through the same door. Same thing with my courtroom. When you walk in, I don't ask what party you are and you don't ask me what party I am. Why? Because it doesn't matter. We assess the facts of the case that come before us. Every judge that's here does the same thing in that regard. We follow the law. We apply the law to the facts. When you're looking at choice, you need to choose the most experienced. You need to remember that experience matters. It's on my name, it's on my sign, and you'll hear it from the other candidates. Why is that important? Because you want the most experienced candidate, judge, hearing your issues that affect your family and your lives. I have been serving this community for 40 years. First as a nurse, the registered nurse in the emergency room at the Robert B. Green. Anyone here remember the Robert B. Green? Then I put myself through law school. I've been a lawyer licensed for 33 years. I have been your judge for three years. I am board certified in the area of family law. The importance of that is the state of Texas recognizes only 853 attorneys in the entire state of Texas that are board certified in family law as having unique experience in an area of law in mine is family. I am, I believe, the most qualified candidate. I believe I've earned your vote and I ask for it. Thank you. Next, we have Mary Lou Alvarez. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having us here. Thank you for having me and my children here. They're actually getting a cookie thanks to Miss Cassandra. So um, I'm a single mom. So most of my campaign events, I bring my Madi, who's six, and my Javi, who's four, to, to, to them. So they can meet people. You can get to know me because I think my children are an extension of who I am, and they have made me a better woman from when they were born. And they are also my inspiration and my motivation for running. I am from San Antonio. This is my community. And my goal and my expectation is that we together will make our community better. I do have experience to seek this bench. I have been licensed for 15 years. I've been in the courtroom since before I, went, I graduated from law school. I, I work for a federal judge in Newark, New Jersey. I work for the U.S. Attorney's Office in Newark, New Jersey. And then upon graduation, I had the, the distinct privilege of serving as a federal law clerk for a judge in Beaumont, Texas, a federal judge in Beaumont, Texas. The majority of my legal career has been at Texas Rio Grande Legal Aid, representing uh, the poor, representing the indigent, representing victims of domestic violence in divorce, custody, and protective order litigation. I'm in private practice now. For those of you who are parents, you know the children are not conducive to a legal aid salary. So, but even now, as a private practitioner, I dedicate half my docket to continuing to serve the community as an attorney ad litem for the children's, uh, the children's court, the CPS litigation, and also as a contract attorney for Texas Rio Grande Legal Aid. I have my undergrad from Stanford University and went coast to coast and brought all of those diverse perspectives to San Antonio, to my home. I'm asking for your support because I want to make sure that we bring justice without exception back to the court. People need to be listened to. Compassion needs to be part of what we do when we're resolving disputes between each other, between brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, and, and we need that now, more than ever. So I'm asking you to vote for me, please. I'll be here, my kids will be here, you can ask them whether or not I'm a good mom. <laughs> well, depending on whether or not I withheld a cookie, don't ask them. Uh, please vote for me, Mary Lou Alvarez, for the 45th District Court. Thank you. Is there anyone here from the 144th District Court? Then the next bench is the 150th District Court, Renee Yanta. How are y'all doing? Thank you so much. I am so glad to be here, uh, rushing to get here, but so glad to be here. Uh, I am the judge of the 150th. The 150th is a civil court. I go from handling a truck accident case all the way to handling very severe child protective services cases. I've been a lawyer for 25 years. I've, been, I've had the honor of being your judge for almost seven. The most important case that we handle at the 150th are cases that involve children. 
that involve protecting children and if at all possible, helping the mother and the father to heal themselves and then heal their family. <clears throat> While doing that work, I found that girls that are in the foster care system, teen girls, 14 to 18, are not served well by the system. So I created a special court on my own that we do at night and on weekends. We do that as a community-based effort. We have mentors, we have over 35 mentors from all over San Antonio. So every year I have 20 girls who are assigned to my court. And together with those 35 women, we provide therapeutic care, we provide very strong, loving mentoring, and we provide life skill training so these girls will be prepared to be adults. When they come to me, these girls are on a path to having probably one in four graduate from high school. One in four. They are on a path to almost every, about 75% becoming pregnant before they turn 18. We are very excited to tell you that after three years, we have had zero pregnancies. And we have a 90% high school graduation rate. Amen is exactly right. This court is called Pearl's Court. I am Judge Renee Yante, and I would be honored to have your vote. Thank you. And next we have Monique Diaz. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having us. How are you doing today? Are you enjoying this so far? I really appreciate you taking the time to come learn about us, the candidates. We are here to serve you. Uh, my name is Monique Diaz. I was born and raised here in San Antonio, but I'm the proud daughter of my Puerto Rican mother and Dominican father. And they came here over 30 years ago because they, like many of us, believed in the American story, right? The story that regardless of where we came from, the color of our skin, who we worship, who we love, in this nation, if we work hard, we're supposed to be able to succeed, right? But I was raised a woman of faith, and my parents taught me at a young age, every night to say my prayers, and at the end of those prayers, I would thank God for my many blessings and pray for the less fortunate. And I took that with me my whole life, but I did more than just pray, right? I have been an avid volunteer in our community. I have served on local boards and commissions. I'm proud to sit on the Mayor's Commission for the Status of Women. I sit on the Maestro Entrepreneur Center Board, which helps minority and small and veteran-owned businesses succeed in our community. But I am most proud of the work I've done in my law firm. I have owned my own firm here for the last eight years. And I do everything. I do family, criminal, business, contracts, wills. I've even been a city attorney and city prosecutor for eight cities, trying hundreds of cases in charge of all of their civil litigation, drafting their codes of ethics, investigating complaints into elected officials violating the codes of ethics. But in all of that work, I am not a rich lawyer because I dedicate so much of my time to pro bono work, like Mary Lou has as well, helping the underprivileged folks in our community, the uh, underserved with free or reduced rate services. So I want to be your next judge of the 150th District Court to make sure every person that comes through that courtroom is treated with the same amount of dignity and respect that they deserve, regardless of where they came from. Thank you so much for your time. I'd love to visit with you more. Monique Diaz for the 150th District Court. Thank you. The next bench is the 186 Judicial District, but I think the judge is in here and he's running unopposed. The next one is the 187th District Court, and I'd call Stephanie R. Boyd. I'm going to step down because I feel like I'm distanced from everybody. My name is Stephanie Boyd. I'm running for the 187th District Court. I have over 21 years experience in criminal law. I have a bachelor's degree in political science, a master's degree in business, and my JD is from St. Mary's University School of Law. My experience 
has been in the criminal courts. My experience has been with felony drug court, it's been with Esperanza court. All of these are treatment courts to help our citizens get up off their feet, to get up and to be better citizens. As I think about what's going on in the country today, I think about what my mom always told me. My mom said when she was in elementary school, believe it or not, they had to memorize a passage. And that passage started with, these are the times that try men's souls. What does that mean? It means try. We are on the edge of a knife in this country. We are in a place where diversity is frowned upon, where civility is a thing of the past. That's important in a criminal court. The reason why it's important is because you need to be civil to people. You need to treat everybody who comes before you with respect. I can promise you that I will do that because that's the way I was raised. That's the way I was brought up. That's the way I am when I'm in the community. I've always worked with children. I worked with children as a defense attorney. I represented them when they were abused. I am working to make San Antonio and Bear County better now as a prosecutor. I handle cases where children have been abused and neglected and raped. What we need to realize is that here in Bear County, politicians come out to you and tell you they love children. They love them during campaign season. But after campaign season, you do not hear from them. And the reason why you do not hear from them is because children don't vote. So you must be the voice of the children in Bear County. We need to stand up. Now, what I see in this crowd right now, I see 10,000 people. And the reason why I see 10,000 people, because I know each one of you is gonna get out there, pull your relatives, pull your friends, and take them to go vote. And I ask for your support, and I ask you to take them to go vote for Stephanie Boyd for judge of the 187th District Court. The next bench would be the 224th Judicial District, but that judge, Judge Kathy Stryker, is running unopposed. The next bench is the 225th Judicial District, uh, Judge Peter Sakai, that's an unimposed bench also. So next we get to District Court 226, and Todd, and I'll call Todd McRae. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Good afternoon. Brothers and sisters, my name is Todd McRae, and I'm running for the 226 Criminal District Court. Criminal District Court means that the cases that this court presides over come from the grand jury. So they are the most serious cases in our community. Many of the individuals in that court are facing life and death sentences. Uh, many of the individuals in that court are repeat and habitual offenders. This race has to do with the next generation of public service in our community. Judge Harl has retired. He's been on the bench for 30 years, and before that, we had a judge that had been on the bench for 10. This bench has been continuously occupied for 40 years. It is now empty, and it will be up to you in a few weeks who is the next judge to preside over this court. I think courts and public offices should be about public service. I have 28 years of experience practicing exclusively criminal law. I started in the district attorney's office in the early 90s. I stayed there a short time and got a significant amount of experience. I moved into private practice, got significant experience very, very early in my career. I've been continuously board certified since 1997 in the practice of criminal law. I have practiced exclusively over 20 years, mainly representing indi indigent individuals in our community as a court-appointed attorney, not as a super lawyer, as, as we see in the magazine. <coughs> So I know about what indigency means. I know about the, the, the underprivileged in our community. I would ask for your vote, humbly ask for your consideration that experience matters. I would also ask that you consider values. My mom said to tell you that I'm a fifth generation member of the Church of Christ. You will get that in a judge if I take the bench and you elect me in November. My dad said to say you'll get a fourth generation Texan. And my scoutmaster said to let you know that you'll get an Eagle Scout when you elect me in November. <laughs> Todd McRae for the 226 Criminal District Court. Thank you for your vote. Uh, Mr. McRae's opponent is Velia Mesa. I don't think she's here. She's, 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 she's. <clears throat> 
The next bench is an unopposed bench, the 227, and so we get to the 285th Judicial District. Is there anyone here for that, for that bench? And then the next one is the 288th Judicial District. Is Clint Lawson here? Cynthia Marie Chapa. here in Bear County. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening and taking the time to get to know us. Two minutes is not enough time to know what we stand for, what we've done. But I'm going to try to give you a little bit and then hopefully you'll do your research and you'll go to my website. If you go to my website, you're going to hear people that are actually speaking about what I've done, who I am, and what I believe in. In this court, you need somebody that's going to have the right temperament. You need someone that's going to have compassion. You need somebody that's going to follow the law. I have served this community for 20 years. I'm originally from Corpus Christi. I moved here in 1998 to attend St. Mary's University where I got a degree in political science. Then I attended St. Mary's Law School. I served in City Council District 3. I served as a district director for state representatives for 14 years where I was able to draft and pass legislation to help grandparents, to give them funding. We have grandparents in this community that are raising anywhere from one to eight children on fixed income. If they're in foster care, they get funding and they get services. If you're a kinship, if you're a relative, you don't. It's essential that we make sure that these individuals are getting the services and funding that they need. I've also had the opportunity to have my own law practice for 11 years. It's a general practice, it's family law, it's uh, doing wills, it is criminal law, it's, and I've served from the Valley all the way to Dallas. I want you to know, I was raised in faith. I was raised to respect one another. I was raised to listen. I grew up with my dad who told me that I could be anything I wanted to be. But he also told me and showed me the injustices that we had. Justice is not easy, and it doesn't come without having somebody that's going to listen and follow the law. Please go to my website, www.chapa2288. Uh, go to my Facebook. If you are willing to support me, please share the information. It is so important to come out before my time is up. If anyone needs a ride to the polls, you can call and get a ride. We have individuals that will take you out. Do not let transportation be the reason that you don't come out and vote. Thank you for your time, and I humbly ask for your support. Next, we have the 289th Judicial District Court, and we have Judge Previty, Daphne Previty Austin. Good evening, well, good afternoon. Hello, everyone, fellow candidates. I am so pleased to be here. Thank you very much. And I want to apologize for walking in a few minutes late. I was modeling at the fancy hat luncheon at Second Baptist earlier today. And so I uh, met a lot of voters over there. We had a good time. But I'm happy to be with you now. And I just want to um, tell you that I know that I work for the people of Bear County. And I want to humbly ask for your vote to be reelected. I preside over a juvenile district court, which is for children that are 10 to 16 at the time that they commit their offense. When they get in trouble, they get to come see me the next morning. And I like to try and get them back on track and get them where they need to be to be good citizens in this community. So to that end, I worked on a couple of new initiatives this term. I've just completed my first term. And we started a boys' mental health court docket, which is the only one in the entire country and other jurisdictions are looking to us to create similar models in their jurisdictions. As well, I was on the board of the Alamo Youth Center, which was to create a place for the teen victims of human trafficking that are so prevalent in our community to try to get them an opportunity to get their lives back on track. We were able to do that with the creation of Centro Seguro on the near west side after only one year of working together with the governor's office and the Kronkowski Foundation. So those are things I'm very proud of. Again, this is two minutes is very short time. If you'd like to know more about me, you may visit my Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, my website is www.electdaphne.com. And again, I respectfully ask for your vote. Now we'll hear from Carlos Quesada. Hello, everyone. 
I'm Carlos Quesada, and I'm also a candidate for the 289 Juvenile District Court. I've been an attorney for the past 10 years. Um, I graduated, well, I went to, I was born and raised in the city <coughs> south side. I went to Harlandale High School, graduated. I now serve on their board. After I went to Palo Alto College, thank God, I got a scholarship to St. Mary's University, but for that scholarship, I would not have been able to afford uh, college. And then I went on to the Thurgood Marshall School of Law, where I gained my law degree. After my law degree, I was recruited to join the district attorney's office in Webb County, which is Laredo, Texas. If anybody knows about Laredo, Texas, that's down the border. It's a tough area of town. <laughs> and um, there, I did four years there. I prosecuted and tried everything from possession of marijuana all the way to murders. After my service here, I came back to my community, came back to the south side where I still live, and I'm serving our community, serving you all as a defense attorney. I do court-appointed cases. I get appointed for everything from uh, possession of marijuana all the way up to felony two domestic violence cases. And I work in the trenches every day with, with attorneys here, like Daryl back there. Um, <laughs> Daryl. <laughs> um, and so we go toe-to-toe -to -toe every day, but we respect each other, and we're doing it good for the good of community. Real quick, for the 289 Juvenile District Court, what I think what we really, really need is a little bit of tough love. I don't want to put some stains on their records. I'm not trying to lock them up for life, but we do need some tough love because I don't want them to graduate to these systems over here. I don't want them to get to the district courts. I don't want them to get to the county court level. We need some tough love at the juvenile level. Um, please look me up, carloscasadaforjudge.com. God bless you all. Oh, I was a uh, altar boy at St. James uh, <laughs> for a long, long time. So God bless you guys. Thank you. And if you have any questions, I'll be here. Next, we'll hear from Judge Melissa Skinner of the 290th uh, District Court. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Melissa Skinner. I am your judge of the 290th Judicial District Court. I have been for eight years. Uh, if I'm a little out of breath, uh, that's because I was modeling hats where Judge Daphne Previty Austin was with the beautiful, lovely people at the Second Baptist. And so thank you for having us here and accepting us running in just a little bit late. I've been on this bench, as I stated, eight years. Prior to that, I was an assistant criminal district attorney for 15. I was actually the lead attorney in this court, trying everything from high-end thefts all the way to death penalty cases and I have massive amounts of experience trying every type of violent crime as well as nonviolent crimes in your district courts here in Bear County. I also did a couple of years as a criminal defense attorney. So I know a little bit about both sides. Let me just say that my philosophy on this court, on this bench, has been that I need to look at people and decide, is this someone that I can help and I can turn around, or is this someone who is harmful to our community? And I have the experience based on all of the cases that I've either tried or have handled, which by the way, I've handled thousands upon thousands of criminal cases. I have the experience to do that, to take a step back and look at someone and say, is this somebody that we can help or is this someone who is a danger to our community? And that's what someone does on a district court bench. And it's essential that the person who takes these benches has the experience to know that and to do that so that we have a safer community but also a better community. Very quickly about me, born and raised in San Antonio, Texas. I went to Providence High School, University of Texas at Austin, St. Mary's Law School. I have three beautiful children who are almost now grown, so I would say adults. And I'm very lucky to have grown up here in this community and who, to have served this community, and I hope to do it again for the next four years. That would be my third term. Please vote for me. I would love to have your vote again and your support. Melissa Skinner, the judge of the 290th District Court. Thank you. And now we'll hear from Jennifer Pena. District Court. A little bit about myself is I'm from a small town. I was the first one in my family to go to college and on to law school. Unfortunately, a lot of my cousins and siblings didn't follow, but I'm hoping to break that cycle with my children and get them into college. Now, I started my career as a prosecutor down in the valley and then came here to Bear County. I practiced and I tried all cases from tickets to capital murder. In 2009, 
I realized that as a prosecutor, I really wasn't making much of a difference putting a Band-Aid on society's ills. So I wanted to do something different. I became a defense attorney. I got licensed in federal court. I tried to figure out what more can I do for my community to make a difference. I've been a criminal defense attorney since then. I'm in criminal courts, I'm in juvenile courts, I'm in CPS courts, I'm in federal courts. What I've learned, and I, and I know I learned this a long time ago, but, but what I'm now vocalizing is that our criminal justice system is, is broke. It has been for a very long time. We have judges that need to be the beginning of a change. We need judges to be the beginning of a change. And that change is not using incarceration as the only answer. We need to focus more on rehabilitation. We need more specialty courts. And if we don't have the funds for specialty courts, judges need to act on their own and become and think like a judge of a specialty court. And that means giving people opportunities when you're dealing with nonviolent offenders. You're dealing with people who have substance abuse problems, who are homeless, who have mental health issues. The answer is not sending them to prison and getting them off your docket. The answer is working with them, keeping them on your docket, helping them. Even if that means giving them one, two, three, four, five chances. If they are nonviolent offenders, and especially if they're young, don't send them to prison. Don't convict them. Don't let them be a convicted felon at the age of 22. My name is Jennifer Pena. I'm out of time. Go vote. My dad doesn't even vote, but don't give up on them. Get them out there. Vote. Thank you. The next two benches, the 436 and the 437, the judges are unopposed. So now we'll be going to the criminal district attorney race and we'll hear from Tilden Schaefer. Good afternoon, how's everybody doing? I'm so glad to be here and I'm so glad you were here. Pastor Daly, thank you for opening your, your doors here and, and the wonderful prayer. And, this office is a critical office in this county. And why is that? It's because the voice of the DA is the voice of law and order. It is, a, it is an office that requires integrity and ethics. It's an office that requires experience, and it's an office that requires wisdom. I've been a practicing attorney in this county for 28 years. I spent the first nine years as a district attorney. I rose to the level of a first chair felony prosecutor, that's the highest level you can get, below supervisors, and I tried 150 jury trials, many of them you know, very dangerous and, and, and deadly felonies, including two capital murders. I then left that office and I opened my own practice where I served the community, and I served the entire community, because that's part of what you do as a lawyer. Um, you you have to make sure that everybody is properly represented, whether they were a court-appointed case for me, or whether they were retained a case, or whether it was a pro bono case, or, or whatever it was. I took an oath to zealously defend the law and my client. Every lawyer in the state of Texas does that, and I took that to heart. If elected, I will take that same oath to defend this community, to protect this community, and to ensure that everybody is treated safely. And what the communities around this county want is inclusion, they want to be listened to, and they want fairness. They want fairness. And that is something that I will take to heart. I've done that my entire career as a prosecutor and as an attorney. I'm Tilden Schaefer. I'm running as a Republican candidate for district attorney. I love this community. I raised my family here with my wife. This vote matters. I, I'm asking for your trust. Thank you very much. Next we'll hear from Joe Gonzalez. Good afternoon. I am the Democratic candidate for district attorney. Before I begin, I want to I want to acknowledge certain people and thank them for putting this together. First is Pastor Daly. Uh, this is about the third or fourth time I come to these beautiful churches here and, and so thank you very much for inviting us here. I would also like to thank and acknowledge the organizations that put this together, particularly Alpha Phi Alpha. There's a couple of members here that I want to recognize, Daryl Harris way in the back, and, and uh, former councilman uh, 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 Keith Tony. 
Uh, Mr. <coughs> Mr. Tony is, is a supporter of mine. He, he is endorsing my candidacy. But more importantly, uh, the reason these gentlemen are special to me is earlier I, I was honored with the opportunity to serve as the keynote speaker to their uh, scholarship gala uh, this earlier this year. And for that, I, I am honored and, and I appreciate the invitation. But what's important is, is not so much that you hear about our, our experience, because folks, everybody up here is experienced. But what's more important is for you to learn about us and learn why we're the better candidate. And I'm here to tell you that I think the difference between myself and my opponent is the vision that I bring to the office. I enjoy endorsements of several people in this community that I know that you, that you, um, that you recognize. One is being a former councilman, but in addition to that, uh, Representative Barbara uh, German Hawkins, I saw her walk in here. She's also a supporter of mine as, as is Councilman uh, William Shaw. But what's important is that those people, including the Express News, recognize how I differ uh, from my opponent. And that is, for example, the Express News said, we recommend Joe Gonzalez for district attorney because the promise of Gonzalez's candidacy is that not only will he be a focused and effective prosecutor, but he will stand out as a criminal, uh, a voice for criminal justice reform. What that means, focus, folks, is I'm going to focus on programs like uh, Excite and Release that have already gone on public as being in support of. I'm going to focus on restorative justice, which means giving people the second chance that Jennifer Pena talked about, and, and those uh, opportunities to give people a chance to avoid being straddled with a conviction. And because of that, I ask for your support, and I ask for your vote. And thank you very much for listening to us. Have a good evening. Mr. Gonzalez stole my thunder because I was going to recognize Representative Barbara Gervin Hawkins next from the 120th District. Would you like to say a few words? Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to be mean and take a little point of privilege, y'all. First of all, I'll tell you, each one of these individuals have worked very hard. And as a judge, it's a countywide deal. I have the the, um, the pleasure of working a district, but they're working county wide and they're working hard. Our judges are important in the sense that they determine who keep their children, who don't. If you get two years or you get 20. So this forum is very, very important. So thank you, Reverend Daly, for the, for the insight and working with, with your folks to make this happen. But what I want to say about this race that is so important, we do need to see change. I think all of us know this. And knowing your candidates is important. But not only just knowing the candidates, work with specific candidates. We can no longer just wait and hope. The early numbers have come in. There is 5,600 mail-in ballots that has been received so far. Last year, this time, there was 8,000. So we're running short, okay? And I do have the breakdown, but I'm not gonna reveal all my secrets publicly, okay? <laughs> What I will ask is this, you don't have to live in my district to work my district, because I know you know somebody in my district. So I'm asking for each and every one of you to help me win this election. I do have an opponent. People think, oh, Barbara, you a shoe-in. Nope, I need your help. And Reverend Daly, Elder Bryant, this needs to be a new day and a new hour in terms of our faith-based community strategically going out and making sure folks get out. If you heard the news this morning, there's a lot of voter suppression going on, okay? And quietly in Bear County, there's some voter suppression going on. So we have got to get involved. So volunteer if you can. Uh, you know, even if it's just an hour or two a day, through phone banking, through block walking, to picking up the phone and call Grandma Joe and Amy Mame and Uncle Big jo John or whatever and tell them to mail their mail-in ballots in, go over there and help them if you need to. So we need your help. I need your help. I'm Barbara German Hawkins. I have a bachelor's, a master's, and a PhD. Okay? The credentials are there. I've got a business background, I've got an educational background, and I think nobody, nobody can doubt my commitment to the community. Nobody. Because I've walked the walk and I've talked the talk. And to me, that is what an elected official is all about because we are truly 
public servants. And then finally, what I want to do is invite you out Tuesday morning. Beto O'Rourke is coming to vote with me at Claude Black Center from 8 to 8.30. 8 to 8.30 a.m. So I want to be able to have a lot of folks there to be able to greet, greet him and also to be part of the voting populace on that day of voting. So if you don't, uh, if you, even if you vote on Monday, still come on Tuesday and, and meet Beto, but between 8 and 8.30 at Claw Black, because I've reached out to him and I've said, we need your help in our community. It's not that we don't have registered voters. Of the 175,000 people in my district, I have 101,000 registered voters. Can you imagine? 101,000 voters. If we work that district, we can win whatever we want to. And so what I'm asking, Elder Bryant, my wonderful Reverend Daly, thanks for the support. I need a little bit more. We need mobilization, okay? We need folks, so I'm gonna give y'all a strategy that I just did. I needed to get a thousand yard signs out. I was able to get a thousand yard signs placed in three days, and this is how I did it. I identified 38 friends, and I said, come on. And so, uh, Councilman Keith Tony came and got it. Those people picked up anywhere from 12 to 50 signs in three days, and I wanted the addresses to so I go check, make sure they did it. <laughs> Okay. They placed a thousand signs for me. Okay, that's what we can do strategically. The elections aren't won just on hoping people come to the polls, y'all. It comes. It happens when you strategically work, and that's what we have to do. So, I'm happy to see each and every one of you here, and I need everybody in this room working, and let's work together for a better community. So that we, for our children and our children's children, we prepare a better place and we honor our forefathers and mothers for the lives that they gave to give us an opportunity to vote. So again, I'm Barbara Gervin Hawkins, running for State Representative District 120, and I don't have it on lock. I need everybody's help. Thank you. Next, we're gonna to turn to the county courts and I call Judge Helen Petrie Stowe. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Judge Helen Petrie Stowe. I have a microphone and I'm in church, and I think it's time to sing Victory in Jesus. Yeah, yeah. All right. I grew up in the Baptist church. My grandmother took me to church every Sunday. She is 91 years old now, and I take her to church every Sunday, and I think that's the way that it's supposed to be. Uh, I have become this judge very recently. Only two weeks ago, I was appointed, not elected. Uh, but I am also the nominee, the Democratic nominee on your ballot, and I am asking for your vote today because in order for me to keep this job in the new year, I need your vote and I need to get elected. Now, this League of Women Voters guide is actually incorrect because it says that my opponent has withdrawn and he's not running. He is running. He did resign and he did step down, and that's why I got this appointment. However, he remains on the ballot, and unless I get elected, he could come back in the new year or all sorts of other things could be the outcome of that. So I'm humbly asking for your vote today. Please do. Now let me tell you a little bit about my background. My professional background is I'm a former school teacher. I actually taught eighth grade English uh, on the east side at Davis Middle School. Uh, before I went back to school and became an attorney, I went to St. Mary's Law School, and then I went to work at the DA's office where I've been for uh, the past 10 years until about two weeks ago. All right, so I have lots of experience, trial experience. I have appellate experience. I know the law. I know what it takes to be a good judge in this court. This is also a criminal misdemeanor court, which is in line with my background as a criminal prosecutor. Um, but it's really not my professional experience that I come and ask you for this vote for. It's actually my life experience, because I have unique life experience. And it is a great benefit to the people who are going to come before me. This is a court where I am going to see a lot of first-time offenders, a lot of young people, a lot of people who have, have taken the wrong road. And I myself, at 16, had a daughter. I have a 24-year-old now. She graduated from college two years ago. Very proud of her, very proud of me. Um, but I actually dropped out of high school. I'm, I'm a sitting judge and a high school dropout, so I might be the only person in Texas who can say that. Um, I got a GED. Uh, I went and got my GED because I decided I needed to get to school right away. I needed to take care of her and take care of me, and high school is no longer a place for me. So I went, uh, 
got my degree, became a school teacher, decided that you know I wanted to pursue law, went back again uh, when she was 10 years old and uh, graduated from law school when she was 13. So I tell you that because I understand what it is to be in a place in life where people make you think that you don't have something to offer the world. And I want you to know that I think the people who come into my court have something to offer the world and I want to help them to do that. All right, so thank you so much. I would love your vote. Judge Helen Petrie Stowe, um, help, help me keep this bench in the new year. Thank you so much. Next, we have County Court at Law Number Two, Judge Jason Wolf. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for having me. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Jason Wolf. I'm the judge of County Court at Law Number Two. I've been on the bench almost eight years now. I'm from San Antonio. I graduated from UTSA. I graduated summa cum laude. And uh, then I have a family. I've been married to Lynn, my wife, for 22 years. I have three kids and three grandkids. I went on to UT Law while raising a family. I graduated uh, with honors from UT Law, and that was commuting almost four hours a day. Um, I went from UT Law into the district attorney's office. I tried everything from misdemeanor cases, uh, DWIs, all the way up to murder cases. And at one point, let me tell you why I ran for county court number two. The reason I ran is at one time I was a prosecutor in that court, and the average age of a case in county court at law number two was four years old. In fact, there was one young man who was charged with reckless driving. He had been waiting for his case, for his trial, for almost nine years. As a prosecutor, I would announce ready for trial, but it was dependent upon the judge bringing in jury. You can't try your case if the judge doesn't bring in a jury. So that's why I ran. It was the biggest backlog county court by far. Within the first year, I had 40 jury, jury trials. I reduced the docket that had 3,500 cases on it. 1,600 of those were set for trial. If you didn't get your trial with the previous judge, he'd say, come back next year. So within that first year, I reduced the docket by over 70%. I currently, and I reduced the jury trial settings from 1,600 cases to presently, there's about 100 cases on my jury trial docket. If you want a trial in County Court 2, you can get it as early as 30 days. So that's why I ran. Uh, there was a recent poll among 400 plus attorneys and the attorneys who appeared before you could answer these questions. They would answer, how does this judge rate for punctuality, for temperament, for impartiality, for working hard and overall judge overall performance out of the 13 county court of law that handle criminal cases I rated number one in every category and I've been endorsed by the San Antonio Express News I've been a blessed man I want to continue to be your judge and if I'm not I know God will put me where he wants me but thank you judge Jason Wolf County Court 2 and next we have Grace Uzumba Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you all for being here, and thank you for your attention in the next two minutes while I explain to you who Grace Uzomba is and the experience. You've heard everybody talk about experience. One of the things that you need to realize, and I did when I thought about coming to uh, becoming an attorney, is I was told that life experience is very valuable when you are going to represent people. And life experience is very valuable when you're going to sit as a judge. My life experience has included 20 years of military service to this community, to this country. My life experience includes working three years as starting up the Center for Terrorism Law at St. Mary's University School of Law, again, serving this country. My life experience includes 10 years as a defense attorney at UI here in Bear County. In those over 10 years of experience, I have worked as a defense attorney for problem-solving courts. Problem-solving courts deal with people who have addictions, whether it's alcohol or it is drugs. Low-level crimes are committed by people who have a drug problem or addiction problem. And one of the things that we need to realize is that we need to treat and not incarcerate. One of the things I look forward to is restorative justice. 
And that is where the legal system, the criminal legal system is leaning towards. That's the trend. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you appreciate the profile that you see here. I want you to look at the landscape of the people who are the candidates who are running. And I ask for your vote for county court at law number two. My name is Grace Uzomba, and you remember that you need Grace. But if you can't remember my last name, please remember this. It starts with you, and I need to be serving you as the next judge of county court at law number two. Thank you. Next, we have County Court at Law Number Three, Ashley Foster. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Ashley Foster. I want to thank you all for being here and for everyone who put this on for us. But I think first I need to express my condolences. Well, to frankly all of us in the room, I can only imagine that none of us won the lottery last night. Is that true? I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not that I would not have still come to meet you. I just thought maybe. We could all do it from my yacht in the Mediterranean. That might have been a little bit more fun. But in all sincerity, ladies and gentlemen, I am running for county court number three, and that's a civil bitch. It handles smaller matters than the district court. A little bit about my background, and I went to the University of Texas for my undergraduate degree. I graduated from the University of North Texas with a master's degree and then went on to you know, St. Mary's University School of Law for my law degree. I then went into the district attorney's office where I fought for victims' rights for the next 12 years. I was primarily assigned to either violent crimes, handling everything from assaults all the way up to murders, and I did a substantial period of time in white collar crime. So I'm, that means that I know how to go after corrupt officials. But again, this is a civil court, so what you're looking at beyond my criminal trial experience is also my civil experience. Once I got out of the district attorney's office, I started uh, my own, <clears throat> pardon me, my own civil trial litigation firm. And then once I got married to my husband, who I've been married to, he's also an attorney, I've been married to him for five years, he and I started Foster and Foster. We now have the joy of our lives, a little three-year-old boy. But all of that aside, as, as Joe D. Gonzalez said, we all, all have a significant amount of experience here as, as we sit on this stage. So what is different about me and about my campaign that you're going to want to know about? Well, when I sat down with my husband, we talked about running for judge. I, we prayed about it, and what came to us is the following. What I have pledged is to not take any money whatsoever from attorneys to fund any portion of my campaign. And why is that important? Because every individual who walks into a courtroom should not be worried that someone else is, is, has a step above because of any campaign contribution. Everyone should come in on the same and equal footing. My name is Ashley Foster. I'm committed to being, having integrity, and I'm committed to justice. And I ask for your vote for county court number three. Thank you so much. Next, you'll hear from Judge David Rodriguez. Well, good afternoon. I did win the lottery, and I'm still here, so I hope you appreciate it. I think it's that important to be here, jokingly, of course. My name is David Rodriguez. I'm the judge of County Court Number 3. I've been on the bench for 16 years. This is my fifth election on the Democratic ticket, and I'm asking for your vote again. Uh, last evening, a number of us were at a mosque, and uh, they were talking to us about the concept of justice in Islam. And I think the concept of justice, as in all religions, is very important, but it's also very important in the law. As we all know, the lawyers among us know that. The kids around here every morning say the Pledge of Allegiance, I pledge allegiance to the flag. And they end it with liberty and justice for all, right? The founding fathers talk about the preamble, we the people, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility. That's a very, very important concept in our founding fathers. This t-shirt has Martin Luther King's quote back here. I just saw injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. That's very important. So, how do we dispense justice? How do we dispense justice? You need to have experience to dispense the justice. Okay? Now, justice is not just the concept of equality and equity. It's nuance. It's discretion. It's experience. You've got to have that experience. All within the parameters of the law, but you've got to have that experience. I'm a much better judge now, 16 years later, than I was when I first started. You learn to be a judge. You learn how to do that. I've tried over almost 300 jury trials. You learn how to do those things. 
In those last 16 years, there have been a whole bunch of judicial polls that were taken. And, in the, and I've always rated very well and been very fortunate. In the last judicial poll that was taken in 2017 uh, that Judge Wolf was mentioning, he talked about the 13 criminal county courts. Well, there are 15 county courts in all, two civil courts. And of all 15 courts, I rated number one out of all 15 courts in all those areas that he just survived, described in, about the judicial temperament in uh, knowledge of the law, in areas like work ethic, impartiality. That's what you wanted a judge. That's what you needed a judge. So I'm endorsed by the Express News. I'm endorsed by the San Antonio Express, uh, the police department, the fire department, the trial lawyers, the defense counsel, AFL-CIO, anybody who gives endorsements, with the exception of maybe the Republican Party, I'm endorsed. <laughs> so I enjoyed the endorsement, and I hope I get your endorsement and your vote. Thank you so much. Next, we'll hear from Judge Jason Garahan for County Court at Law Number 4. Hi, hi, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, gosh, sorry about that. Hi, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having us today. Uh, I'm judge of County Court Number 4. I've been the judge for the almost coming up on four years now. And I just want to briefly tell you about myself. Uh, I grew up in this community my whole life. Uh, I worked for my parents for several years also. They own the Humphrey Farmer Steakhouse here in town. They've had several locations throughout the years, but there's still one remaining Hungry Farmer on the south side, Southwest Military in 35. And I've worked there for uh, throughout my life. And, you know, being in the restaurant business, and anybody who's ever worked in the restaurant business, <laughs> it teaches you humility, teaches you work ethic. How, how, you know, I've learned a lot of things from the restaurant business. I've met a, a lot of people through the restaurant business. Now, by grace and, and fortune uh, that I, uh, I ran a, my own location, and I ran that for 12 years, I ended up at one point saying, well, restaurant business is not for me. I want to be a lawyer. And I went to law school here in St. Mary's. I, I was lucky enough to be admitted uh, into St. Mary's Law. And I graduated, and I ended up getting hired by the DA's office here in town. I, I prosecuted for 10 years. I, pro I tried anything from speeding tickets all the way up to capital murders. Now, that's a little bit about my, my experience uh, throughout my life as, as a, uh, well, up to this point. I've been the judge, and I've worked the docket. I go to work on time. I leave on time. I also have worked down the docket from 1,600 down to 900 active caseload per month. I've tried over 150 jury trials. That's more experience than most people have as an attorney. I will tell you this, Judge Sid Hall, that's a city judge for 30 years, and now the presiding judge of the fourth region said to me and to others, Judge Garahan does the right thing on the right cases. And he's the region judge. He has been appointed by the governor, and the, I'm sorry, the senators. So keep that in mind. Judge Sid Hall is telling you that I am ethical and I have the right temperament to be on that bench. I'm Judge Jason Garahan. County Court number four, and I ask for your vote, and I thank you very much for being here today. Next, we'll hear from Alfredo Jimenez. Good uh, morning, everybody. I guess it's still morning time. I want to thank everyone for being here. No, it's not. It's afternoon. Um, <laughs> the football's on. I, I'm, not, I'm hurrying, I'm hurrying. I'm going to give you the short version of, of my qualifications. Because like Joe said, everyone here is qualified. We're all lawyers. Um, we've all you know, paid our dues and, and, and worked hard. And by the grace of God, we're here. Um, I myself uh, you know, have... Um, I married to my lovely wife of eight years, uh, Cassandra, who is, today is her birthday. And she's waiting for me at Papa Do's, so i got to hurry. Um, so I need to get over there. But anyway, uh, thank y'all for having us. It, it, uh, this election is not about us. It's about you. Our country is at a crossroads. It's a time for change. Because things the way they are right now are simply just not working. And they're getting worse and worse and worse. And it's up to you guys. Because without you all, there is no us. So I could sit up here until I'm blue in the face and tell you how great I am and how I deserve this and I deserve that. You all deserve that. Not me. You all deserve it. You deserve someone up here who's going to know what it's like to live in your neighborhood. Know what it's like to have that brother, sister, cousin, mom, dad who comes before criminal courts. 
This is a criminal court. I've been a licensed lawyer for going on 16 years. I graduated from St. Mary's University. I got my law degree. The next day, I was at the Bear County Courthouse hustling cases to make a living. I've defended everything. Um, I'm licensed in two United States federal district courts, and anyone who's been in, in the United States district court knows that's no, that's no joke. I bring humility to this, to this job. I will bring humility to this job. I will know what it's like. I know where you've been. I know where you're coming from, and I know what it takes. Um, my endorsements, I've been endorsed by the San Antonio Express News, Bear County Adult Probation Officers, AFL-CIO, but that means nothing without your, without your support. And like I said, this is your election, not mine. We've been, we've been running campaigns now for going on 16 years, 16 months, almost it seemed like 16 years. <laughs> 16 months, some of us two years. And, but without you guys, we're nothing. I ask for your vote for judge of county court of law number four. Thank you, have a blessed day. Next, we have County Court at Law Number Five, Julie Bray Patterson. Good afternoon, you all. My name is Julie Bray Patterson. I'm running for County Court at Law Number Five. I am running to make a difference and I am running to make positive change. There are three things I want to accomplish if elected judge. One is I want to increase the day to day efficiencies of this court. Two, I want this place to be known as a place where all are treated fairly. And three, be a place where all are treated with dignity and respect. I'm from San Antonio. I went to MacArthur High School, went on to the University of Texas School of Law. I currently practice criminal law. I do some juvenile work as well as adult criminal work. The majority of cases I take are appointed. My goal in that, and it is a mission field in that, is to make sure all are, have a fair shot. All have a fair shot at justice all have a fair shot at being heard. I have worked on the other side. I prosecuted in the Dallas County District Attorney's Office. I do want to tell you about three other outside organizations that have come to me to ask me to serve. One is Morningside Ministries. I'm on their board. They're a nonprofit dealing with elder care. Two is the City of Almas Park has asked me to be their alternate prosecutor. And three, the Family Enrichment Court. It's a specialty court in one of the juvenile courts. They deal with domestic violence in the home. They've asked me to be their staff attorney in, this, in that court. And again, the reason I say these things to you is that these organizations have come to me and asked me to serve and believe I have something positive to offer. And now I'm coming to you to ask you if I can serve you as a judge of county court at law number five. Again, early voting begins Monday. I'm Julie Patterson. I'm from San Antonio. I'm for San Antonio. And I ask for your vote. County Court at Law number six is an unopposed bench, so we'll move to County Court at Law number seven, and we have Judge Eugenia Jeannie Wright. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Pastor Daly, thank you so much for letting us be here. I am the judge of Bear County Court number seven. I don't need to go into my experience and why I should be judge of this court. I am the judge. And I realized when I came in here that I've been here before. I was here for Jubilee Sunday. I was a speaker for Jubilee Sunday because I'm a Silver Life member of the NAACP. I'm a member of the League of Women Voters. And I'm terrible with names. Elder Bryant, where are you? I'm a lifelong Methodist. And as a child growing up, the things that I liked, I liked stories. I liked stories from the Bible. That's how you teach the children religion, right? My favorite story was Martha and Mary. Remember Martha and Mary? Mary could sit and listen. She had the heart to listen. Martha could push that room. I'm a bit of both because this court requires a bit of both. County Court 7 is a domestic violence court. We deal with children. We deal with families. We deal with the most intimate relationships in your life. And you better be a Martha, and you better be a Mary. And is Glenda Woll in here? The League of Women Voters? I get your emails. I wondered what you look like. I'm Jeannie Wright. And I don't know what, what Representative Hawkins has got, but man, I want it. Thank you. Jeannie Wright. 
Next, we'll hear from Michael DeLeon. Good afternoon, folks. Again, I'm Michael DeLeon. I'm running for judge of county court of law number seven. Forgive my jeans this morning. We had block walking efforts going on and several events throughout this busy weekend right before early voting. A uh, little bit about me. I'm a born and raised in San Antonio, went to Edison High School, graduated from UTSA with a degree in political science and got my law degree at South Texas, South Texas College of Law in Houston, Texas. Since then, I've been a prosecutor with the district attorney's office for the past 17 years. And a majority of my career, I've been doing domestic violence prosecution. County Court 7 is one of our domestic violence courts. We have two domestic violence courts in Bear County that do domestic violence, a specialty court. And I feel that because of my experience in domestic violence, I not only handle family violence assaults, but I've handled family violence aggravated assaults, family violence murders, family violence capital murders. If you think about it, domestic violence at the most extreme form turns into murder, and that's what we don't want in our community. So as a member of the community, I want to help our community to stop domestic violence. And that's my message today, is to stop domestic violence. As a judge of the County Court 7, I'm gonna work with offenders to make sure, you know, because when somebody lands in County Court 7, we've kind of lost the battle already. Half the battle's already lost because they've ended up there. In our community, we want to have prevention so that people don't end up being arrested for this offense and showing up to our court. But at that point, we have to find out what is going on with this individual. Is it an anger management problem? Is it a mental health problem? Is it drug or alcohol? Those are things we need to look at and make sure that we work with our probation department, work with our resources, so that we can make sure that we have people who do not reoffend for family violence. And because the next time they do it, under the law, they become, it becomes a felony charge between two to 10 years in prison. We don't want to have people at that point. We want to have homes that are violence-free homes. Um, again, I'm Michael DeLeon. I'm running for judge of county court number seven. I have cards in the back, and DeLeonforJudge.com is my website if you want to learn more about me. Thank you, folks. Next, we have County Court at Law Number 8, Judge Celeste Brown. Thank you. Thank you all. Is this on? Yes. Thank you all for having me here today. I am honored and blessed to be your judge in County Court 8. Um, I've been the judge now for almost four years. I uh, won't talk about all my experience. I'm going to talk more about my drug court and how proud I am of my court. Um, I have a specialty court. You're, you, I've heard others mention specialty courts. Um, I have the DWI Drug Court. And the DWI Drug Court helps those that abuse alcohol. We try to get them into school, get their diplomas, get them into college if they can, you know. Uh, we get them into sober living, safe homes. We give them bus passes, we give them food, we give them uh, clothes if they need clothes. Everyone needs something different. I try to figure out what they need, um, what the needs are. And, and as far as sanctions and punishment and all those kinds of things, everyone needs something different. It's like having kids. I have three kids and you take a cell phone away from one or you take the bike away from the other or the friends away from the other. You know, It's whatever that they need um, to learn. And I really do try to help each and every person in front of me. When I have inmates in front of me, I want to know if they have IDs so that they can get a job. A lot of people don't have a job because they don't have an ID. Um, so I have a resource where they can get IDs. I have resources for jobs, to get people jobs. I ask them, do you have a job? Do you have a place to live? So I would really appreciate your vote. Um, I love what I do. If you help one person, you're helping an entire family, which helps our community. So um, please vote Celeste Brown for County Court 8. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So one more thing. I was awarded Outstanding DWI Court in Texas last year in 2017. We worked really, really hard and the Center for the Judiciary um, nominated us and we were awarded that award. So I'm very proud of that too. Thank you. Next we have County Court at Law number nine, Judge Walden Shelton. 
Good afternoon. Thank you for being here today. I'm Judge Walden Schultz, and I've been your judge of County Court at Law No. 9 for the past eight years. County Court at Law No. 9 is a general jurisdiction court, but primarily 80% of our docket is DWI cases. Let me tell you why I am the best qualified for this court. I tried the first blood warrant case in Bexar County. I used the first Soberlink monitoring device in Bexar County, the first Smart Start monitoring device in Bexar County. I wrote the standing discovery order that every judge in Bexar County uses for DWI cases on blood cases and on Intoxilizer 9000 cases. I'm on the Texas Center for the Judiciary DWI Committee. We provide the training for every judge in the state of Texas regarding DWI, from the municipal judge all the way to the Court of Appeals. I have the experience. I ask you to keep that experience on the bench. If you want to know more about me, it's judgeshelton.com. Again, my name is Walden Shelton. I ask for your vote. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Gloria Saldana. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to talk to you in person. I am Judge Gloria Saldana. I am a judge at this point in time. I have uh, been a judge of the 224th District Court and 438th District Court. When I was up for re-election in 2010, I uh, was not re-elected. It was a red wave, and all the Democrats got knocked off the benches. But I'm not someone that can be let kept down. I ran again the next term, and I got re-elected to the 438th. So I'm just telling you that because I'm a strong person, and I'm an independent person, and I have uh, now been working as a visiting judge, hearing district court cases and misdemeanors. I finished a two and a half week jury trial about a few weeks ago. It was a very complicated one, but all that experience that I have, I want to use it in County Court 9 to make it more efficient, but much, much more fair. Since 1991, I've been a mediator, and the most important thing I learned about that training was listening is an art. And actually, when you listen to people, you are showing them respect. And we know that from when we raised our children, right? When we talked to them and looked at them in their eyes, and we told them, look, this is not right, they would listen because we were getting their attention. So it is very important, that, that is part of due process, actually listening to people so that they can actually defend themselves. That's a constitutional privilege we all have, and it is un, uh, unalienable, something that cannot be taken away. Um, I believe in justice, obviously. I have been doing my best. I have a reputation for good judicial temperament, and I don't judge people by the way they look or how much money they have. Obviously, I am from humble beginnings, and so I can relate to people who don't have a lot of money. So um, I thank you for this opportunity to talk to you. I hope that you will remember I have brought some Mexican can candies named Glorious, and you're welcome to enjoy those. And I hope that you will remember to look for my name on the ballot, Gloria Saldana. Thank you so much. I don't think there's anyone here from County Court at Law Number 10, so we'll move on to County Court at, no, no, County Court at Law Number 11, uh, Judge Tommy Stolhansky. Good afternoon. I'm Judge Stolhansky at County Court 11. I just wanted to come and say thank you. I don't have an opponent on the ballot, but I still wanted to be here. I wanted to thank you for being informed. I've heard a lot about your country, and this, these are about local races. This is about Bear County. These are about the candidates here in front of you. These are about the colleagues that I work with every day who are working for you. And so I want to thank you for coming and getting informed. Um, I'm the judge of County Court 11. I have a criminal docket, civil docket, and I also run our drug court. We've heard a lot about drug courts today. We have excellent specialty courts here in Bear County. So you're always invited to come down, visit any of our specialty courts, see how they're going. If you have any questions, feel free to ask us. But I want to say thank you for being here. Thank you for voting, and uh, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Next, we'll move to County Court at Law Number 12, and we have Yolanda Huff. Hello, everybody. 
I'm Yolanda Huff. I am the current president of San Antonio Black Lawyers Association, and I really just want to thank everybody for being here today because you made the choice to be informed, and you're here, and that just means so much to our organization and all our partners. Like As I stated, I am Yolanda Huff, and I am running for County Court 12. That is a criminal misdemeanor bench. Um, a little bit about myself. I, I'm a single mom of three. I graduated from UT Austin in 1989. I worked three years for the Lieutenant Governor. I then moved to San Antonio to go to law school. Graduated from there in 1986, and I have been here in San Antonio with operating my own firm ever since, 21 years as an attorney. Why I want to be a judge? I, I, I think that um, I want to serve the community, and I really believe that I have a servant's heart. I really believe in giving back, and I think that it is so important to give back. Um, I was that child. There are 12 kids on my mom's side. There's 10 kids on my dad's side. I was the first one to go to college. Um, once I did it, all of my little cousins coming up, they, they saw that it could be done. I have a cousin right now that's working on her PhD, another one that's an, that's an assistant principal at high school. I think that the children of Bear County, the children of color of Bear County, need to see themselves reflected in the leadership at the courthouse. That is so important because it just takes one. You see that, they need to see if, if, I, can, if I can do it, they can do it. Um, I, will, I plan to, as much time I, as I plan to be in the courthouse, I want to be in the community. Put me to the test, call on me, ask me to come out and speak to youth groups, because I want to be there, and I think that's what it's all about. Yolanda Huff, voted for County Court 12, I ask for your support, thank you. Now we're moving to County Court at Law number 13, and we have Judge Crystal Chandler. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Crystal Chandler, and I'm your judge of County Court 13, a misdemeanor criminal family violence court. Uh, mainly, I deal with the domestic violence cases. You know, everyone in our community deserves to live in a home free of violence. And what we see with domestic violence is that it knows no boundaries and it knows no zip code. And the reason I chose this court to run for you know, back in 2013 is because after you know, working at the district attorney's office for many years and working in the felony family violence unit, handling murders, aggravated assaults, crimes against children, whether it be physical or sexual abuse, handling them in the trial courts, and then also handling them before the appellate courts, you know, arguing them before our, our fourth court of appeals and all the way up to the highest criminal court in our state. I, I realized that when the judge of this court was retiring, that I had an opportunity to bring the experience and passion that I have in this area to the bench. You know, I grew up in a situation where many of us have our own personal struggles that we deal with. Yeah, I grew up in a small Texas town with a blinking yellow light. I was abandoned by my birth parents who struggled with addiction, and I was raised by my grandmother. And it was because I had a family here in San Antonio, a half cousin, that was willing to take me in, and that I had the opportunity to see what a normal family looks like. And so with that personal life experience, when I started handling felony family violence cases, I sat across from those victims and handled those cases, and I, I, I told God that I understood. I understood why I experienced the things that I did as a child and how I can bring that knowledge and experience to the court, and I have come up with innovative ways to deal with the issue of family violence in the home. And if I had more time, I would talk to you about them, but I would love to talk to you after this uh, uh, this opportunity here and back in the back. Also, I have my cell phone number on the back of my card. You can call me anytime and I can tell you about the innovative programs that I've started in County Court 13. And my slogan, the choice is clear, crystal clear. Thank you so much. Next, we'll hear from Rosie Gonzalez. Thank you, Judge. The first book of John, chapter 2, verse 11 says, Anyone who hates their brother or sister walks in darkness, 
and is in darkness. And I'm very happy to be here with you in what is obviously a very enlightened flock and congregation. Let me be clear. I've been invited by many churches in this community to come in and speak to them, but I've not been welcome. And I feel very welcome here, and I want to thank you for that. My name is Rosie Gonzalez. I am running for judge of County Court at Law 13. You've heard about the domestic violence issue in our county. Um, and I'm going to tell you something. Despite all the efforts being made at present, the numbers of those cases continue to double. And they continue to double because we need a change. We need a different type of innovation. We need a different type of judge. We need a different type of justice. I bring that to this court. I want to bring drug court, an established drug court, into County Court at Law 13. Not just something ordered through some conditions of probation, but an actual program. Because we all know that violent behavior is fueled by coke, alcohol, meth, and over 90% of those cases coming into this court. If you have a sober defendant, you have a healthy family, and you have a safer community. And that's what this county needs especially in light of the fact that we have record numbers of domestic violence cases intersecting with substance abuse drug cases in this county. The other thing I want to bring to this court is transparency and accountability. Integrity as qu claimed by a judge is no longer enough. I want to bring in a live feed into this court. So you can watch what the prosecutors are doing, what the defense counsel is doing, what the judge is doing. And I'm sorry, if you're a defendant that doesn't want to be on a live feed, keep your hands off of people. <laughs> Just keep your hands to yourself, and you won't be on that live feed. Again, my name is Rosie Gonzalez. I'm running for judge of County Court at Law 13. I want to thank the League of Women Voters for putting this voter guide together. If you go to page 41 of the voter guide at the top, you'll learn more about my candidacy and my campaign. I am asking for your vote. I humbly ask for that vote tomorrow on Monday or on Tuesday or for the next 16 days that follow. And if you don't get out to early vote, November 6th is the day that you can create change through your acts and through your, through your actions. Thank you very much. Next, we're gonna to move to County Court at Law number 15 and we have Melissa Barra. Everybody. Thank you for the invitation to be here to speak with all of you today. My name is Melissa Vada and I'm running for County Court at Law Number 15. A little bit about me, born and raised in San Antonio, I grew up not too far from here, down the street from St. Mary's University. I went to Jefferson High School, went to UT Austin for undergrad, and went to St. Mary's for law school. Currently, I'm in private practice doing mainly criminal defense cases, which are the type of cases that are heard in County Court 15 misdemeanor cases, and also doing family law with a high concentration of cases involving children going through uh, child protective services. As a kid, I was really close with my grandmother, Grandma Vada, and she would take me to the dollar store, she would take me to elementary school, and I remember this one time in particular, we were out eating at a restaurant, and a cashier was really rude to her, and I must have been eight or nine years old, and I asked to speak to a manager, because I knew at even that young age, I needed to be my grandmother's voice. My grandmother was elderly, she didn't speak English well, and being her voice was something that was important to me, and it's something that I've continued throughout my career as an attorney. Whether it's representing children going through the foster care system, representing people through the criminal defense system, or representing elderly members of the community and helping them to navigate a complex probate system. On the campaign trail, people always ask, you know, what kind of judge are you going to be, right? Fair, impartial, a judge that has experience, that's what all judges should be. But I think the difference in this particular race is work ethic and compassion. Work ethic because as an elected official, you need someone who's going to get there early and stay late. The Express News recently endorsed me over the sitting judge and they saw that there was a need for change in that court. I will be that change and work hard for each and every one of you if given the privilege to serve you as judge. Compassion because I feel that a judge needs to be compassionate to treat every person in every case that comes before them on a case by case basis, regardless of what you look like, regardless of who you worship, regardless of how much money you have. Again, my name is Melissa Vada. I'm running for county court at law number 15. I'm from this community and ready to serve every member of this community. Thank you. 
Next we move on to the probate court number two and we'll, you'll hear from Julie Hardaway. Remember when they said earlier that probate was at the end, but I guess we have some extras, but um, thank you for having us and thank you for being here. I am Julie Hardaway, I'm running for probate court two. Um, I'm really looking forward to election day because that means this race will have been run and um, also because it's the 22nd anniversary of my licensing to practice law. I have practiced law here in San Antonio um, the whole time in probate, trust area. I started out as a private attorney with my dad and grandfather and learned probate and real estate with them and then went on to work for the probate court one for Polly Jackson Spencer as her staff attorney where I learned how the court runs um, from filing to um, judgment and from the budget and getting computers, everything you can imagine. Um, and then I went on to Broadway Bank where I have served as a trustee and executor for people for the last 13 years. Um, it's been my pleasure to serve those people. I think that it's very important to have someone that has experience and has compassion and integrity to help people through those times where they have lost someone or they have someone who can't take care of themselves or their property. Um, I'm from San Antonio. I went to MacArthur High School. I went to Southwestern University. Um, it's a Methodist school, or used, used to be. And um, I also went to Texas Tech for law school. I, am, I just finished nine years on the board of directors for the Ark of San Antonio, and I served as president for two years. And then I'm also on the San Antonio State Planners Council Board of Governors where I am vice president this year. I really hope that everyone will get out and vote. It's so important to express your opinions and feelings that way, and we need to all get together and just vote in and look at people's experience, their integrity, their professionalism, their work ethic, and how they treat people. Um, I hope that you will vote for me. It's Julie Hardaway, Probate Court 2. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Veronica Vasquez. So, I am also a member of the NAACP. My name is Veronica Vasquez, and I wanted to start off with a quote from Martin Luther King. We are prone to judge the success of man by the index of his salaries rather than, or the size of our automobiles rather than our relationship and service to mankind. The reason why I bring up that quote is because that is what I do. I have dedicated the majority of my career to public service. First, as interning at the Texas Civil Rights Project, where that inspired me in college to become a lawyer because I realized a lot of the injustices that were happening across the state. Second, well, I got accepted to the University of Texas School of Law. The, after graduation, I interned at the New York Legal Assistance Group, where I helped the indigent um, and the elderly of New York with drafting wills, I was an intern there, I was drafting wills, powers of attorney, and educating the public. That brings me to my current spot today. I work for Catholic Charities. I was most recently the director of the guardianship and probate department. I am still there as a staff attorney. Um, what I do is I serve not just Bear County, but 19 surrounding counties. I serve the working class, the, the working poor, and the indigent. And those are the majority of the people that are gonna end up in this court. Uh, so I have that kind of compassion and experience. I live my values, I live my morals. The other thing that I think um, that I wanted to tell you about is it's bittersweet, but to say that I'll be the first person of color in the history of the probate court. We have had two probate courts in Bear County and we've never had a person of color. And if you think diversity doesn't matter, you're fooling yourself. Because while I may not be the majority of what looks like a probate attorney, the majority of the people that end up in front of that court reflect the rich diversity of our community. So I think it's important for individuals to be able to look at the bench and realize that they have somebody that they can, just like Yolanda said, they can identify with, and that's me. Um, the last thing I want to end with is my endorsements. I've been endorsed by um, the, oh my God, I can't even remember. <laughs> well, well, it's time. If you go to my website, you'll see all of my endorsements. It's the AFL-CIO, the, the Communication Workers of America, Malgulator Transit Union, the probation, Adult Probation Officers, Lloyd Doggett, Nelson Wolf, Congress Castro. So you can all go to my website to see all that. But again, compassion matters in this courtroom, and I hope you consider voting for me. It's Veronica Vosk is the last court on the ballot. Thank you. Next, we're going to go back to the 144th Judicial District Court, and we have Judge uh, Lorena Rummel.
Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for sticking around for the last speaker. I was modeling fancy hats this morning at the Baptist Church, and I walked in right when I was supposed to speak, so I apologize for that. I am Judge Lorena Rummel. I am the sitting judge of the 144th District Court. It's a felony criminal district court. All Bear County wide. People say, what district is it in? All the courts are all Bear County wide. It will certainly be on your ballot. It hears murders, rapes, aggravated robberies, capital crimes, things of that nature. And that is what I've spent my career doing. First of all, I came from a family of service. I was military. By the time I was in sixth grade, I had gone to, actually seventh grade, I had gone to six different schools, lived in five different states, two different countries. But it didn't bother me. I was proud that my father was in the military. He served his entire career. My brother was also proud. He served his entire career in the military, but he was deployed to first Kuwait, then Iraq, then Afghanistan. I too wanted to serve the community, and I feel that's what I have done as an attorney here in the community. I was with the district attorney's office for 17 years. I served as the voice of victims, women, and children. I was a defense attorney for almost six years. I served as the voice of defendants, making sure that justice was done. And as a judge, I would like to continue serving. I've been effective, efficient, and compassionate. I had the worst docket, turned it around in four years with the help of amazing attorneys, great staff, and it now has the lowest number of pending cases, the fewest defendants in jail, and the quickest to trial. I am compassionate because I run a specialty court for human trafficking victims. They all have a common background of felony prostitution, but I've learned 80 to 90% are victims in their own right. It's called the Esperanza program. That means hope, and that is what I'm bringing in their lives. Lorena Rummel, 144th. Thank you. All right, so that brings us to the end of the program. And I want to thank you all for coming, but I think we all should give the candidates a hand for coming here and sharing the information with us. Today we received some very important information, and I hope that you'll use that when you go to the ballot box starting next week. Also, remember, next week starts early voting. And there is no excuse not to vote. You can vote almost anywhere. And as I said, if you don't know where to go, we have the list outside. Also, you can check the Election Department website. On the November 6th, which is Election Day, you don't have that luxury. You have to go to your polling place. If you go to the wrong place, they'll turn you away and you'll have to find it. So it's important that if you're going to vote on Election Day, because some people like to do that, and that's great, you know exactly where you need to go. So at this point, also remember that when you vote, you have to have identification. So you have to take a driver's license, you have to take um, a Texas ID, you can take a military ID, you can take a passport. But in order to be able to vote, you're going to need to show some sort of ID. And lastly, remember V is going to be offering free transportation if you show your voter registration card. And Lyft and Uber will offer some sort of discount or free ride, but there's, you're going to have to have the code. And so you're going to have to go to the website and figure that out. We appreciate all of you attending this event, and we thank you, and we hope that you go forth with this knowledge, and you vote, and you get your friends to vote, and you get your families to vote, because this is the only way we have a say in our government. Thank you for coming.